Greetings. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Carrie. How are you? Mm, a little scrambly day today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm supposed to be working at school, but um, I injured my foot last night, so I'm working from home today. Oh, what happened? I don't know. I think it's just a old recurring injury, like a plantar fasciitis or something like that, where it's just all swollen up and too much walking last night, I guess. So how has, you, how has your week been? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's been okay. I, I can't say it's been smooth. We've had a lot of stuff with, with school going on, and now we're online for more, another two weeks. So, you know, everybody's kind of stressed, and my views don't match their views, so I have to sit in silence, mostly. I, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah. so do you want to review what we did last week? Yeah. How was your week then? Uh, very good. Lots of work done. Um, lots of progress everywhere. So well, that's uh, good. Uh, right afterwards, there's a three hour broadcast for the old growth forest trees. Uh, oh, yeah. To unify that uh, looking forward to. But um, so, the, I mean, everywhere, I mean, you know, it's just kind of crazy everywhere, right? So, yeah, it feels like the lid's getting ready to explode, but. Maybe my sense is not quite right. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it, so. I think there's just such a disconnect around, you know, spring and, and the beautiful weather and then the lockdowns and, and everything coming, you know, keeping people in place and just doesn't fit. Like it just. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. Very true. Mm. Yeah. So, um, no, I just said, what did we do last week? in terms of the yeah we did the um we did my values on my own little map under the five communication spaces five communication spaces and then we talked a little bit about um the ideal ideal job at the hub and look you know thinking about what that would look like okay and okay. what were your five values again it was group was love and passion Personal was creativity. One on one was freedom. Community was individuality. And sacred was purpose and alignment. Okay. And so since then, have you noticed, let's say, a higher degree of irritation, maybe, of maybe things that are not in alignment? Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah been irritated for a while <laughs> oh gosh yeah you got that right <laughs> yeah i mean the problem with these ideal maps is they sort of are used as the, for the what we compare with reality and, it, and the more defined yeah. you are, the more you know what you want then you see what you're in and that, that can be a little difficult i i think especially in your position yeah no that's that's definitely true and I mean have a like I said to you my probably what I believe about what's happening isn't in alignment with what the job that I have to do right now so it adds a little bit more stress and I think this week was just yeah it was kind of that like you said everything feels very disconnected and it's like you know but I do feel like it's almost ready to the lid's ready to pop off or maybe that's just me <laughs> maybe it's my own lid <laughs> I think that that may be true. We'll have to see. Just keep, yeah. Keep me yeah. if you're ever going through a period of intense craziness. You can always contact me and uh, and just sort of download because I understand that there's certain. Um, it's hard to talk about certain things, and I'm sort of, you know, more open to understand what you're going through. And just in case, uh, yeah. sometimes things can get a little just too much, you know. Yeah. No, I totally appreciate that, and yeah, kind of feel that for sure. But at the same time, there's you know lots of stuff moving forward, so kind of have to just put it put it as much as you can behind, learn from it, and and use that to propel forward into what what we're creating that's new. So that's kind of the way I look at it. Well, I admire your resilience and your uh, and your uh, and your ability to maintain your sanity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there were moments. Let me tell you. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, but it's 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 good. Funny thing, but I had just got a little tattoo this summer, and the uh -huh. word is resilience. So oh, it is. Really? Okay. Okay, so today we're going to do the flow map. Okay, awesome. And do you know what the flow map is? Now you probably sent it to me somewhere, and I have um, seen it, but I haven't really worked with it other than with our group you know, in Yorkton when we would get together and I was always the sporadic little piece. Okay. In and out. Okay. Could I, I think I, uh, I made a, a two minute video that may be of use to you that I'd like to screen share and show to you. Um, sure. Let me just see what I got here. Um, just give me a sec to line it up. Yeah, no problem. I like the hat, by the way. Thank you. Nice. Earth Day today. It is. Why does that always do that? Okay, so can you see the screen? You bet. Okay, so this is just a... Okay. Very exciting, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so did that help anything? Let's see. Oh, wait a second. It's a nice soundtrack. Good soundtrack there. Yeah. Lord of the Rings. So um, did that help to explain things? Yeah, I think. I think so. 
So what the only thing, well, not the only thing, but where it's got the 4.1 and the 6.1, which, where does that correlate to? The choice is the one, the flow is the two, synergy is yeah. the two, and four is the harmony. And then depending upon where you are on the wheel. So then it goes to the Enneagram. So like okay. 2.1 would be the flow wheel at one. Okay. 2.2 gotcha. would be the flow wheel at two. Gotcha. Okay, so right now, do you, do you have a bunch of post-its or can you rip up 10 pieces of paper? Yep, just give me one second. Oh. At least I'm putting a little weight on it. Last night wasn't so much. Okay, so on the first piece of paper, write down field. Okay. Second, resources. Third, third is job. Four is activities. Five is products. Six is relationships. Seven is paths. Eight is strategies. Nine is agreements. And 10 is conversations. And so for your first exercise is just yep. arrange these 10 concepts into a sort of a pattern in front of you that makes sense to you. Like, how do you think they connect together? And where would you, if you were going to make a map with these 10 concepts, how would you place them? And just do that till, and then let me know when you're finished. What's that? I'm kind of struggling with agreements, like on what it might, how it could be interpreted, I guess. I guess, you, I mean, you could look at the contract you have with the school board, the contract that teachers have, um, right. you know, con any type of agreement that sort of takes place in your life. It could be your mortgage, could be um, agreements you have with your husband or your kids around certain things, uh, agreement with yourself. Okay. I think. Okay. Can you have it sort of grouped. Yeah. Can you kind of explain what you got? Yeah. Like I have agreements. I sort of just have it on the top. And I don't know if that's on the very top of all of it or just on the top of this one line, but I kind of see it in all of it. So I kind of put it at the top. Okay. And then I, then I had conversations and relationships sort of grouped together, paths and strategies in two, products and resources in two. And then kind of at the bottom, I had activities, field and job. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. And so tell me something about these words. Tell me, have you ever seen this kind of grouping before? No, not really. 
like not in in this kind of a detail i mean obviously you're in my work i'm used to these words but mm. in terms of doing it for my own self probably haven't laid a map out like this before okay ever. so what is it is there what do you see in common with the words yeah like i think the conversations and relationships although those are embedded in maybe job activities all those other things i kind of see those two as a, a group together and then i looked at sort of the paths and strategies of how you're going to get somewhere or you know to a goal i kind of looked at it like that what are the paths and strategies to get there um i looked at how you're going to get there based on, on what you might create with products and resources or what you have to get where you want to and i see them all intertwined like you can't do one without the other mm. um and that's kind of why i had agreements at the top i think because the, those agreements sort of tend to embed in all of these pieces mm. for me and then i'm not really sure why i don't know i just felt like activity activities field and job were almost like a not a separate entity but it's a separate category Okay. So I don't know for field what what were you thinking there or what does field mean like your position your you know well a field can be tangible or intangible I mean like the obvious thing is a field like a farm field in a sense but it's kind of like fields are like you and I are in a field right now between us as we speak yeah you're in the field of Yorkton I'm in the field of Vancouver we're in a larger field of Canada um, you're in the field of your house, you're in the field of this room, you're in the field of your own body. Like it's kind of yeah. anything, anything with a boundary in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. But you look I at might... in science, it's like the field of physics, the field of biology, like knowledge comes in fields too. Yeah. So, so it's, it's quite a, it's quite a good word for a very vague way to look at a lot, everything in a sense. Yeah, so then if based on sort of that discussion, I'm, I would tend to put that almost like the umbrella, like the field, the agreements, and then these other subcategories is kind of how I see it. Ah. So if you put yourself in the position of the job as principal, and then sort of use it as a lens, and then sort of like looked at all the activities in your school, looked at the field of your school, looked at the resources of your school, looked at the path that people go down, look at the strategies they're using, look at the relationships that you have, look at the products that you're creating, look at the agreements that you have, look at the conversations you have. That's one way of taking one of them and now looking at all of them through that, which is different yes. than let's say if all of a sudden you move this to the field and let's say you look at Yorkton and you look at, okay, let's look at all the jobs or let's say the hub factor and you look at the four of you in, in, in four different jobs, right? So it's kind of like what we're doing is we're starting to create this idea that we can use these conceptual lenses to filter information and to see the world. So each one of those, I call them structure words, can contain a lot of information, meaning mm -hmm. there's a lot of different types of activities. There's a lot of different types of products. There's a lot of types of relationships. There's a lot of paths. They're like, they're, they're words that are very abstract, that are very high end in terms of the abstractness, but then they contain so much information. So to use it as a model, the idea is that you can use these words to define or design any job. Mm -hmm. That And as soon as you have this as a map in your mind, you could look at every position in your school and see it through each person's job and see, okay, what resources do they use? What conversations are they having? What field are they in? Um, that sort of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a arrangement or pattern for those words to go on. So we're taking these words that are sort of like, uh, they're, they're used everywhere. You just arranged it in a certain way and, and, you, and you, the mind's starting to go, okay, well, we got these things, but what I'm gonna give you is a model that's a map that is the primary reference point for the whole thinking system that you're learning. 
because the, the, the most that we, I mean, we, we, do, we learn everything through, through association. So the best thing to do is for you to put your knowledge and experience within this map in a sense. So it's like giving you a new set of clothes or giving you a new operating system. All of a sudden you're getting this map that you can use in any business situation. Because we're, we're looking at, we're creating a universal business model that you can use, put your knowledge about being a principal and in schools, but then you can apply that to any other business system because every business system uses resources. Every business system has jobs. Every business system has relationships. Every business system has agreements. So we're looking for very basic universal words that can apply in every situation that can organize your content. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Let me just pull up another map here. It takes a bit. So do you want to give me some feedback? Just uh yeah, I mean, it, it definitely resonates in terms of the lens that you are using and, and how you see things based on um, based on sort of the role that that you're in at that moment. So whether it's, you know, being the principal or being a mom or being the dance instructor or being the hub person, you kind of, they all align. I can see how they align, but I see also how, how much impact that has on how we view things. So to me, that you know, there does sort of seem to be this overarching field, clearly, that um, sort of brings it all together. Okay, so could you, on a larger piece of paper, draw an Enneagram? Do you ever see the musical Lamad of La Mancha? No. Peter O'Toole? No. You ever hear of a Don Quixote, the Cervantes book? Yeah, yeah. They made a movie called Mad of La Mancha with Peter O'Toole and Sophie Loren. And oh, okay. It's, it's a musical and it's, it's uh, I don't know, I'm just whistling it. <laughs> I should probably know it because my daughter's a musical theater um, person, so. I should probably know, but mm, don't. That's when I don't. Okay. So do you know how to draw an Enneagram? Yeah, the 963. And then I, if I remember correctly, one, two, eight. Okay, so at number three, put job. Okay. At number six, put relationship. And at number nine, put agreement. I mean, six relationships. Okay. Then, so tell me about that as a primary triad in terms of looking at your school and how things run. Yeah, um, the agreements of what we're there to do, I suppose, impact how you do the job, they impact the relationship, they all, you know, impact the other. Um, seems like the agreements at the top, it's a big arch away there. Well, I mean, if, if you look at it, right, I mean, every teacher in your school has a contract, I imagine. And yep. the contract stipulates the relationship between the jobs, like you're the teacher and the principal, and this is how we work together in a sense. So we're, we're looking at the, the primary reference point yep. for how we organize the school in a sense, right? So yep. have you ever sort of looked at the school, let's say, just in those primary three concepts? Have you ever seen something like that, Triad? Not in any of the training that we do. I think it's something, you know, you kind of intuitively do, or at least I do, but like, no, like we don't sit down at any of any of my <laughs> university classes and say, here, no. Doesn't it make no. sense to you? Yeah. 
totally. Well, and I was thinking as you were talking too, or just about the, you know, the agreements that then aren't necessarily paper agreements, but the hidden agreements that people have then with, you know, maybe themselves or with a parent or um, with another staff member. So how that then impacts relationships and then that how that impacts, you know, the job, not only performance, but how it then impacts the culture of the school. And so, um, yeah, makes sense. Okay. So now um, in the center point, put conversations. So now that is is looking at um, obviously that the conversations it's a communication system and the conversations are what connect everything together. Mm -hmm. So it connects what the jobs are between each other, the type, type of relationships you have, the type of agreements you have. So it creates like a tetrahedron. So this is the beginning of starting to think in geometric shapes mm -hmm. of linking four concepts together and then giving the mind basically a, a sort of a new way of thinking in terms of multidimensional tetrahedrons and uh, do you know Buckminster Fuller have you heard of him no he he was a person who was quite ahead of his time and he said that the reason we aren't sustainable is we we our mathematics is xyz axes using cubes but the universe organizes in tetrahedrons and so at the very basic you know, the bottom line of how, you know, our mathematics is set up has us off because the basic shape of the universe is the first shape is a tetrahedron yet, a point, a line, a plane, and one more point gives you a, a three-dimensional object. So the tetrahedron is the base unit for all the other platonic solids. And it's kind of like a, it's a base unit for what I think, I don't know where it came from, a thought cell. So at the center point here, what we have is you and a job, you with your relationships, the agreements you make with these people, and then all the conversations that take place. And then at five, you can write products. And now you're having another primary reference point at five where the products are, you know, what happens in the classroom, you know, your curriculum, you know, all, all the, all the things that you want your kids to learn. Um, yeah. You know, what are you producing from that tetrahedron? And then that's kind of like your output right into the world. And so, but that's the products at five and you group them well together at two put resources. And at eight, put strategies. So you're using the resources at two, which could be the school, the classrooms, the chalk, the people, the books, the media, everything that's a resource in a school are being used at five to make products. And then they're going into the world through strategies at eight. So that relationship between your resources, products, and strategies is a, another triad. Right. And then this is happening at one in a field where activities at four take place on a path at seven. So that's another more doing triad of, you can just see it like you're in a field, you're, you're, you're let's say bouncing a basketball and you're going down a path. But you, right. could, you could basically, you know, as a principal, you walk into the school, you sit down at your desk, uh, you start doing your paperwork and uh, you're, you're doing the paperwork, you walk down a path. Like it's just, it's so fundamentally basic but it's, it's like looking again, like what are the simplest things that we can use to start to see and organize everything in our world? Mm -hmm. So now they're all in on the Enneagram, which starts to show a different relationship where you see like two at eight 
like what resources do you have at two that are needed for your strategies at eight? You know, what field are you in at one and walking down which path at seven? You can start to see the, cor the correlations between the, the lines. Yeah. Because the Enneagram, what it does is on the outside is doing, on the inside is thinking. And so you're sort of like you're in a field, you're using resources, you have a job that are in a field using those resources to do activities at four, to implement products at five, with relationships at six, where you walk down a path according to some strategy that uh, has you complete or do an agree, you know, complete the main agreement that you've done. So again, all of these are happening at the same time. Each one of them is a different perspective and you're giving a map to the mind to reorder all how you see because it's giving you a holistic system. Yeah. So you want to give some feedback on that? Yeah, I think it's just a different way of, of thinking about how things are organized. And I and that makes sense. Because you think pretty linear linearly, if that's a word. Mm. And and to to you know look at it from a more multi-dimensional way makes sense. And then you can see how they all impact the other and then that correlates into the bigger picture so yeah that makes sense to me so yeah. you like you like he yeah i do yeah i can see lots of, of value in having people work through that in in the groups i can see where that would have a big impact and then obviously impacts out into the world when we have more and more groups that understand how it how it needs to shift. Yeah. Okay, now we jump into what we did last week where the one of the biggest things we discovered was how to program these words or, or fields or perspectives with a value custom designed that you choose. So right now, get another 10 pieces of paper and, okay. and write down 10 values and you can take some of the values from the other map or not but write okay. down your top 10 values and write them on individual pieces of paper. Oh. No, no, no. Okay. No, just a, a basic one sentence. Yeah. Kind of my intent is. Not. Okay. Oh, yep. Yeah. What you got? I, I, I have to lead, build with others, to empower passion, authenticity, and fun to create lives of purpose. Okay, that's a lot. It's uh, it's good. Go big or go home, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of intention. Can't, I know. Can't can't do. Can't do it small. Okay, so now turn your values over, shuffle them around so you don't know where they are. Okay. Hold uh, that intention in mind and then place the values upside down. I mean, just place them turned down on top of each one of the places on the Enneagram. Okay. And one in the middle. And then when you're done, start turning them over one by one and tell me what they are. You should have made a bigger map. <laughs> I 
and I clearly can't count, which is another problem. Okay. Okay, start turning them over. Okay, so at, you want at nine or at one, or it doesn't matter. Maybe do nine, three, six first. Okay, nine is creativity. Okay. Three is spirituality. Okay. Six, love and passion. Nice one. Okay. One. Oh, one, sorry. Individuality. Okay. And then four, no. Yeah, four. Four, yeah. One. Nice. Two. Freedom. Nice. Strategies. Strategy is truth and honesty. Path. Path is purpose. Product. Authenticity. And in the middle. That was the one that was sticking out. Integrity. <laughs> okay. You have just made your first flow map. That's cool. Didn't take that long. Wasn't too hard. No. I love it. So give me some feedback on the map. What do you uh, go through each one, one at a time, like individual like field, freedom of resources, sort of explain to me what, what you think that means. Based on the ones that I picked, hey? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so I had individuality at one field. Um, yeah, I think for me, that's kind of what it's all about. That each person, whether it's part of the job or role that I have, or it's working with other people or what other people bring, that whole idea of each one of us being our own unique selves and how that impacts everything, whether it's you know, relationships or products or conversations. Like I think, I think that's it for me. That's what I like. Like that one. <laughs> like that one a lot. <laughs> Yay! It's funny that I I don't know how freedom and resources like a, mm, I divinely picked it. I'm not sure. I guess it could impact the freedom to be able to choose, you know, different resources and to be able to bring different ways of thinking or different um, ways of doing things is kind of how I interpret that. Yeah, it's funny, it kind of ended up there, but. Well, you could also, for some people, financial freedom, right? Like they, you know, all of a sudden you made half a million dollars somehow and all of a sudden you're financially free, you don't have to work in a school anymore, right? No, that I like. No, that really resonates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think that's something like we're all learning about freedom, right? Like I, we've never been free, really, in, in the context of what we're living in right now. So I think that's a big world lesson for me too. Like kind of getting rid of the... Uh, the ties that bind, we'll say. Mm. <laughs> hey, so, three, three. Um, J 
job and spirituality. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think it's about being connected to a higher power to create, to live a, a job that is meaningful. You know, job. I don't really love the word, but you know, we all have to do one at some point. So, and whatever that is, I mean, we all have different jobs in our in our life, whatever that is. And I think for me, yeah, I can I can see how that came through. Okay. But I didn't realize how spiritual I was actually <laughs> for a while. I could, yeah. Anyway, maybe why I don't fit into the school system well. Okay, four. Okay, four activities is fun. Yeah, I like that one That's a lot. And I think too, like if I'm wearing my hat of principal, I bring that to the staff all the time. Like that, I love that. And I love bringing that to the hub. Like we're doing something and then I just say something stupid or we do something that's fun because I think that's what thing brings people joy. And that's how you can make, you know, make a difference as you have fun. and. Why are we so damn serious all the time? Mm. Okay, five, I had products and authenticity. Yeah, I can see that. I don't like anything fake. And not just in products, but I mean, I, I couldn't, I couldn't sell this, sell this if I didn't believe in it, mm. but I believe in it. So then it's like, yeah, that makes sense to me. There's alignment there. I, yeah. Authenticity? No, I don't like bullshit. So, don't don't try to sell me something that ain't real, cause I ain't buying. <laughs> uh, relationships, love, and passion. Mm. Sure, mm. that's a good one. Yeah, I like that. Purpose and no, uh, path and purpose. Yeah, I can see that. Just in, in anything up here don't feel that it's purposeful or it doesn't align with who you are, maybe you're on the wrong path. So when we have that purpose, then your path, I think, becomes clearer and vice versa. Mm. Okay, um, strategies, truth and honesty. Yeah, that would be my strategy. Don't like bullshit. <laughs> and yeah, all right. Creativity and agreements. Yeah. I think it's about too not um, looking beyond what the agreement is in a different way. Maybe that's what that one is. And not only having agreements that are paper agreements. You know? Yeah, interesting that that one ended up there. I might need to sit with that one a little more. Well, Do you have any it, thoughts on that one? Well, it may also be that you're, you know, I don't know how many of your of your teachers get rewarded for being creative in terms of what they're doing, but it, let's say within the agreement, there is sort of like a bonus to be more creative. Like if, if you came up with new ways of doing something, um, there's like a lot of times people won't do that because they want it. They feel like they're rocking the boat. But if within your whole persona is this, I want to create and I want to, you know, uh, help people create and I want to create myself. So how am I going to do that? I have to be, you know, make more agreements around, you know, how to do, I mean, it might, it might be to go to the person who does your lawn. to you know, cut this tree in a creative way. I mean, it, it might back. Yeah, no, that, no, what you said, that, that makes sense. Cause I was, as you were saying that, I, I think, like that would be something I, it's kind of an agreement I have with myself too. It's like, if somebody's going to do something, I won't purposely do it because they've already done it. I want to do it a different way, mm. but a different way. And so even when you said that about stuff at school, yeah, it's like we're having a staff meeting now we're all virtual, but we set up a studio because I'm not doing just a Zoom meeting. I've got a, and then people came, we made a game show and people come in and then they add their creativity and I ask them to do that, but I've never thought of it about making it like a, bonus so yeah i like that now makes sense okay yeah and then the lone wolf integrity now how does that come into conversations yeah for me 
I think that's that's sort of the foundational piece, like honoring and speaking the truth to each person that you converse with, whether that's your friend, your partner, your teacher, people at the hub. Like I, I think we the values and actions have to align, so we are showing that our words are me meaningful and and has to, for me that's yeah very important okay so now a final little exercise to do with this is i'm going to ask you a question and you're going to use your intuition to answer it from a number minus 10 to plus 10. okay okay so in what we're doing is we're looking at you know how much individuality is in your field how much freedom is in your resources so we're just going to go through each one of those and as I say it, I'd like you to give me a number from minus 10 to plus 10. And zero being our neutral? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so individuality at field. At field. Six. Freedom at resources. And am I using the, uh, the lens of just my role as principal or just general? Just in general. Okay, freedom at resources. Eight. Spirituality at job. Spirituality and job. Hmm. Probably like four. Okay. Now remember that like if you have like one or two, it may seem low, but it means you have a lot of potential to reach. If you have eight or nine, it means you're almost at the top of your potential, realized potential of that value. Oh, okay. So just so you know, like. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I didn't quite interpret that that way. You wanna do freedom at, at resources again? Yeah, like that's probably like a, that's probably a nine. Nine, okay, already. Yeah. Okay, because we're looking present moment. Okay, yep. fun and activities. Eight. Authenticity of products. Four. Love and passion at relationships. Seven. Purpose at path. Two. Truth and honesty at strategies. Nine. Creativity at agreements. Nine. Integrity at convo. Eight. Okay, so no negatives, that's good. So, so looks like you're strongly already uh, in there. Um, so we're coming to the close to the end. Any questions or feedback or? Would it be, do you see it being the same, like, you just use different lens, so if I, would that be the same as the hub and in my principal role, or were those two sort of different? Well, this is, kind of, I would say this is more towards your ideal job. Okay. Um, you might have interpreted it through your principal role, but it's sort of more, um, I guess, you know, you'll be going through transition year. You can use this as your principal and then you can switch it over as you change whatever it is but it's uh it's yeah it's kind of like you know all these things exist for you as a principle and all these things exist for you as an ideal so yeah and the values can still you know they take you know it takes a lot like about a year um to really come in but i would i would definitely suggest for you to memorize this map um, I don't know how you are with memorizing, but it would really help because it's the main reference point for when we layer on other things in the inflow. I would also write down like kind of like in a journal, like a paragraph for each one of them. Mm -hmm. And just dive deeper into what you think that means to you because a lot of time when writing stuff comes out. Yeah. Yeah, I think I kind of used more of the lens of principle versus ideal job and yet I see how that could be more congruent and, and then yeah. I would sorry um, yeah no I uh, then to 
I draw out the map nice. Like I'm sure it's all scribbly and stuff, but just maybe sit down and, and do it all nice. So we have completed session two. You now have the infamous flow map, which now you can show to the other ladies and see what they're, they have. Yeah. And this is, again, something that you can do with anybody, right? I mean, it's, it's not yeah. that tough to do. Um, very simple exercise. Yeah. Yeah, it brings a lot of clarity, that's for sure. I like the... Uh... Yeah, I like the divine sort of where things ended up kind of interesting mm. for sure. Yeah, well, thank you very much. As always, very enlightening. <laughs> You're welcome. Very enlightening. Okay, well, we'll see you next week. Yes. Okay, take care. <laughs>